my message to Prime Minister Trudeau is simple. The fun is over. We need the Prime Minister to get serious about jobs, about his job and jobs for Canadians. That is the interim Conservative leader, Ronna Ambrose, ready to put Justin Trudeau's feet to the fire on Monday when the House returns. But have they had to shift their playbook now that Justin Trudeau has backed down, at least a bit, from the cash for access controversy, changing the rules so ministers will not be allowed to host fundraisers in private houses or the mansions of the rich. They're going to have to talk about it publicly and they're going to have to let the media in there. They got to deal with that and to talk about dealing with Donald Trump and the conservative leadership race where Kevin O'Leary has started to shake things up. I'm joined now by the interim conservative leader, Ronna Ambrose. Uh, great to have you back on the program. What's your reaction Hi. to Justin Trudeau? saying he's backpedaling on the cash for access and changing the rules. Well, you know, he should backpedal because what he's done uh, is unethical and what he's done is wrong. But it's really an odd response because we already have rules in place that disallow cash for access. So all he actually has to do is stop holding fundraisers where he sells influence. He's the most influential person in Canada from a government point of view. And what he was doing was asking people to pay to come to see him to talk about government business. That's not allowed. So that's all he has to do. There's rules in place. They've been in place for 10 years. He's the one that brought cash for access back into the, that's the irony. He came into the government, I mean, into parliament after the election saying he was going to up the ethical standard. And he is the one after 10 years that has brought back this issue with cash for access that we saw way back when in the old liberal days. So the, the law is in place. All he has to do is say, I'm not going to ask people to pay okay. me to talk about government business. Just, just stop doing that. Okay, but hang on a second. Uh, the liberals have said, and Justin Trudeau has repeatedly said, despite the politics of it, and they clearly now admit the politics looks bad. So I, I, I agree with that. But they have said he did nothing illegal. He did nothing wrong. They followed all the laws put in place. Now I'm asking you, do you believe Justin Trudeau was breaking the law? I think without a shadow of a doubt, he broke the rules that he brought into place. His very own rules that say very clearly, there shouldn't be any you know, selling of influence, but there shouldn't even be a perception of any influence. And that, you know, clearly, has been violated and you know I don't think I'm the only one that thinks that so what all he needs to do is follow his own rules will you support the new fundraising laws <laughs> Evan I've never had a problem following the law and we've never had these problems in the last 10 years I guess my concern is this Evan um, you know a list a bigger room a more public place I don't, is that going to stop them from selling influence and from demanding that their stakeholders pay money to the Liberal Party to discuss government business? That's the issue. It's not how public the place is, how private it is. Okay, so just to you know, be clear, there's a list, so let me just be clear. The issue is what's discussed. Okay, so let me just be clear. If they put forward this as legislation, as they've outlined, will the Conservative Party support these rules, yes or no? What I'd like to see is the Prime Minister follow the current rules or even his own rules? I think, Evan, look, I just think this is a tactic to okay. try and right before we go back to the House, he doesn't want to answer any more questions on ethics. That's all this is. I really don't think this is a serious attempt to deal with his ethical violations. All he has to do is say, I'm not going, I'm going to make sure to never talk about government business, just as the law stipulates, anymore when I do fundraising as the Prime Minister for the Liberal Party. That's all he has to do. It's very simple, and I, it's within his control. Okay, let's talk Donald Trump and trade. This is the big, big issue here, of course. Donald Trump has threatened to renegotiate or rip up NAFTA. You've seen what's going on in Mexico. He's talked about putting a 20% border tax on anything coming from Mexico. Do you believe that Canada should now begin renegotiating the NAFTA accord or a trade agreement without Mexico? Look, I don't think uh, at this point we know what's going to happen. I mean, the unpredictability of Donald Trump leaves a lot of anxiety, obviously, in a, for a lot of people. But what we do know is what he has said so far is that he wants to renegotiate NAFTA. I think there will be some tough challenges for us around trade irritants 
that the Americans have always brought up, like, for instance, supply management. Yeah. Uh, I think the, the country of origin labeling, the beef, the beef sector might have some serious challenges as well. Uh, these are going to be some tough discussions for us. There's no doubt about it. But I think writ large, we have a, a good trade balance with yeah, the United but, States. But, but look, I do think that they will come after certain things. Yeah, they will. Uh, last question for you. You and I know we're, we're barely a week into the Trump administration. Uh, a lot has happened already. You once said that Trump's views are, quote, off the spectrum, frankly, or that's not a voice we would welcome in our party. H how does a Canadian leader like you or Justin Trudeau, how do you deal with a guy like Donald Trump, a guy whose views you have been very public of saying that, that they wouldn't even be welcome in your own party? Well, I said that about... Uh one specific thing. Donald Trump said that he would, he would ban all Muslims from entering the United States. And I said that was not a view that is welcome in our party. Um, and that's what that specific comment was about from me. Look, he is the leader of a foreign country and he was duly elected. It's up to, you know, when we think about our trade relationship, which is what I'm worried about, I worry about jobs, I worry about the economy, that's our number one priority. We're going to do, as members of parliament, even though we're in opposition, everything we can to help build that relationship and create stability between the two countries. All right, 10 seconds left. What's the key question on Monday when question period resumes? What's your number one question? <laughs> I think I might get up and say, Mr. Speaker, I don't know where to begin. <laughs> There's so many things that I can ask. I mean, we've got a massive deficit. We've got ethical violations, questions around ethics. Uh, we've got, you know, what are we going to do on softwood lumber? What are we going to do when we renegotiate NAFTA? Um, you know, what's going to be in the budget? Uh, there is just, there are so many issues. What's going to happen with, you know, the energy economy, with so many people, you know, over 100,000 people out of work in Alberta. There's a lot, this is going to be, I think, a challenging year for Canada, for the Prime Minister in particular. So, as I said yesterday, the fun is over for Justin Trudeau, and I think the hard work begins for him. Got to leave it there. Ronna Ambrose, interim leader of the Conservative Party, her own party, in a pretty hotly contested leadership race right now. Thanks for joining us.